weird. So anyone who can hear us, if you just put on the, in the messages which channel you're on, that would be really helpful. Okay. So <clears throat> I've just rebooted one computer and look what's happened. So, yes, look, my apologies, folks. Uh, no sound, no audio. So, Fitz, I think probably <laughs> probably should go back to the start and start again. Yeah, what do you think? Sounds like might have to. <laughs> uh, oh, I just want to see what's go going on in the chat, guys. There's all this conversation that's got nothing to do with tonight. Uh, so I would ask whoever's in the chat to actually focus on why we're here instead of you can have your private conversation yeah, elsewhere, yeah. guys. Um, that's not what we're here to do, right? Because if you're not here for the solution, you're here to distract from the solution. So if you guys have a private conversation elsewhere, please go ahead and have it, but just not in this chat. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning. We're uh, talking about rights tonight, folks, and uh, and this is a part one of certainly a part two, maybe a part three in the series of rights. Uh, you might think that rights are straightforward that is not the case so uh, without further ado as we've, as we've already buggered up the first 21 minutes and my apologies for that that was probably a button pushing error at my end um let's get back into uh the show uh, well back to the beginning so here is part one of a video that fitz has made up and he told us earlier uh this is all exclusive stuff it's not even on soundbite university yet so uh thanks for, for all your efforts over the weekend getting this one ready fitz and uh, let's have another go. We, you did say we'd need to watch it multiple times. To take, <laughs> take so, so those that saw the picture maybe the first time and didn't hear anything uh, might now be able to uh, get a bit of a gist of what it is we're talking about. So uh, my apologies. And uh, here we go. Let's get into it. Okay, so I'm hoping to do a deep dive into rights. Um, before I do, I just wanted to um, acknowledge Mark Passio because a lot of the definitions and explanations I've drawn from his work. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to give him a quick um, acknowledgement. Now, the only thing I did want to say here about ending slavery one mind at a time, I actually don't have the patience for that, to be honest, my friend. I'm wondering if there's others that are like me who need to do it more than just one at a time. That's why I'm doing this, to do multiples at a time. Anyway, uh, let's dig into the beginning of it. And we'll start with one I've defined before. I'll just go over it again, hopefully quicker than last time. The term rights is routed in knowledge of natural law. Rights are actions that protect all aspects of one's integrity. Hence the right actions needed to preserve peace and harmonious coexistence of all life. So let's go a little further. Rights are inherent in nature, regardless of a population's belief system, because rights are eternal truths that need to be understood, because rights are actions in harmony with natural law. So just have a quick think about that one. It's inherent in nature, because remember, they're the actions that are required to preserve peaceful, harmonious coexistence, and nature is all about balance. And when you have balance, you have peaceful, harmonious coexistence, right? So it exists in nature and it's inherent. Uh, so that's an eternal truth, right? It cannot be denied because you see the consequences of when actions are out of alignment with someone's rights. We all know what happens there. Well, I, I want to hope we do. Well, there's a lot of people who don't actually because they're allowing the horrors that are going on today and that have been going on for centuries to carry on unabated. So I take that back. Okay, so most people are of the belief that there is a justification to create and delegate rights that do not exist or to take away rights that do exist. So the majority, I'm afraid, without realising it, believe that there is a justification to actually create and delegate. So someone else gets to do that, that like it gets given to somebody else or a group or a gang. And mostly we call them government but yet they don't exist. Um, and they also believe it's okay to grant them the ability to take away rights that do exist in nature. So it's like playing God, really. And that's what um, most people have done, majority anyway, especially the ones who went and voted, uh, have done by uh, electing these people into government unabated with nothing different, you know, in the, in the hope that something better was going to come out of it because people only do what they know. So now I'm going to, explain or um, define the term justify. 
So let's have a look, shall we? So it comes from the Latin jus, which means right or law, and the other Latin word facere, uh, which means to create or to make. So to justify means to create or make up a right and to manifest it into existence. So that's what the purpose of why people elect people into government is now and has been for a very long time because they don't understand their true position in nature because they have uh, been lost from the day they were born. That's how good of a job those self-appointed masters have done on uh, us because all they really are are just ancient psychologists who understand the true nature of the mind and how to manipulate it. And that's why we are where we are. Okay, so when one acts on the belief that rights can be granted and taken away, so that's if you believe in government, that they are above you, the laws of nature deliver the consequences of that pursuit, which always leads to chaos. Let's have a look at how life is these days, if you need any more evidence. Yeah, so what's happened to all these families that, that were once together? Yeah, they're all split apart and they're all going through misery. Um, you know, need I say more? Like if we can't create a system that actually preserves the most um, fundamental fabric of how human beings come into being, then what else is there other than chaos? I mean, honestly, what more do you need to see? Okay, let's define chaos. Chaos is true disorder and disintegration. Like, you know what it means to integrate? Well, this is to disintegrate, like the disintegration of the family unit, for example which has been massive. The denial and destruction of freedom. So think about what freedom is, right? How much of us, how much of us actually enjoy that now? And actually, how much of us did we ever really enjoy? It's just that we didn't know. We were under the illusion of it. Now the illusion's gone for those who want to see what's there. Uh, that leads to the unnatural state of slavery. Now, slavery is not natural, right? It's, it doesn't exist in nature. So chaos is an unnatural state which always leads to slavery and that's where we've been for a long time we just weren't aware of it and now those of us who are aware can see what's always been there okay so to give it a little more depth we're going to do a little bit of a thought exercise i guess uh, have a little exercise in conceptualization or using imagination so i want you to visualize a scenario of a world where there's only two people and if the behavior between the two, now you've got to visualize two scenarios, where the one is in harmony, one interaction, and the other is out of harmony with the preservation of peace. So imagine that the two together are acting in harmony with what is required to preserve peace. And then imagine another scenario where they're acting in a way where they're not in the service of preserving peace. Now, Regardless of how many people there are, if the actions are the same, whether it's in the preservation of peace or whether it's out of alignment with the preservation of peace, it's going to be the same for any size population, regardless of what the people believe. Does that sort of make sense? I'm hoping you guys are really getting that, right? So no matter what you believe, if the actions are out of alignment with how to preserve peace, because we innately know that, our conscience knows that, that's why we have one, our conscience is our collective understanding intuitively of what's required to live in peaceful, harmonious coexistence, right? So your beliefs are separate to your conscience. That's a mental program. So if that behavior is the same on a, on a micro scale as it is a macro, it's always the same outcome. So no matter if it happens in between two people or if it happens on a mass scale, it doesn't matter. So the idea that we can grant government, right, the right, to actually act in accordance with domination and still believe we can live in peace, right? That's been the overwhelming belief for the majority. Yet they internally suffer in ways that they can't recover from and most of them need to actually go and do some kind of medication. And when I say medication, I don't just mean like take drugs. Like I mean, you know, like behaviours, things that are like cravings and, and addictions you know, so gambling and, you know, engage with um, all kinds of illicit activity, 
Like there's just so many, and some people just numb out, you know, then there's the, the, the classic garden variety. We just go have a shopping binge, you know, it's was, it was like eating disorders. Like you just pick it. There's just so many different things. Some people pull their hair out. I mean, there's all these different things you would never imagine. So I'm just going to leave it there because I need to pick up and come back with uh, more depth. So that'll do for this round. Okay, so uh, that was part one. Played earlier, funnily enough. Uh, apologies once again. So without holding anybody up and making things later than they need to be, let's get straight into part two. This is part two of our deep dive into rights. So just going to quickly go over the first definition I used. Uh, so the term rights is routed in knowledge of natural law. Rights are the actions that protect all aspects of one's integrity. So I didn't explain integrity last time, so I'll just explain it now. Integrity means um, to be whole. Uh, so the ways that your integrity is protected is spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and physically, right? So you, all of those four ways, it can be penetrated and violated. And so there are actions that are required to preserve your integrity. And once that it, that's happened, once you're in that state where you're preserving your integrity, you can live peacefully and harmoniously within uh, nature, as nature does with itself. So now we're going to go into some of the violations of one's integrity. And a big, big one, that's uh, if you've ever heard of this statement, Death and taxes, this is one of the biggest ones. And it's been here for who knows how long. Um, I'd say lots and thousands and thousands of years, if not 20s and 30s of thousands. <clears throat> so taxation, the claim that a specific group of people who call themselves government, I'd call them a gang or a cult actually, have delegated themselves the right to confiscate an arbitrarily chosen percentage of the product of another individual's labour. And we all know about the slaves of Egypt, et cetera, you know, they apparently built the pyramids. Who knows about that? But, you know, <clears throat> that was their labour. They never got to keep any of it. It was done for somebody else's benefit. Well, how different is it today, right? That was taxing their energy directly where ours is being taxed how? Indirectly, because we go and perform labour for someone else. They already get a good share of what we produce, right? So they keep a good share of it. And we get remunerated some crummy amount and we don't even get to keep all of that. Yeah. So it's so the product of individual labor, that's a form of property. And the word property, that actually mean comes from the um, definition that which is proper to man. So something that's exclusive to you and only you. That is your property. So your labor is exclusive to you because it comes from your time and energy and effort, concentrated effort. Uh, so regardless of the property owner's willingness to share their product voluntarily, right? So that's what tax is. You don't get to choose whether you want to share what you've produced from your labour. It's just going to happen. Now, you think about what percentage could one actually imagine that is not a taking of your right to um, your the product of your labour? Could it be 50? Could it be 25? Could it be 10? Could it be 1% if you were being taxed 1% of the whole 100 that you put in? Is that now like you're not being violated or is it still a form of violation? Is it all or nothing? That's what you need to decide, right? If you, want, if you can answer that question, then you can understand what taxation is. If you think there's still a percentage that you can be taxed where that's not a violation, then, um, yeah, you might enjoy this whole government structure we've, we've been living under for thousands of years. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So taxation is enforced by the threat of violence to violate you in which way? Mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, through further loss of resources or property, through bodily harm or confinement, like imprisonment. So you think about what's being lost there, right? So you, when you're imprisoned, there's the removal to choose one's location and freedom to move between locations. This removal of the freedom of assembly and who you associate with, because in your prison population, you don't get to choose that, right? You're just forced into whoever you're going to associate with is whoever they've shoved in there with you. If those from whom the product is being seized, so this is what's going to happen to you if you attempt to resist the confiscation, right? So you're going to get one of these or more. 
loss of resources, loss of property, some bodily harm or imprisonment. That's what's coming to you. That's what's being granted to these self-elected rulers, They're granted it to themselves. Now remember government, as we've discussed before, it's always a front for those who hide in the shadows. So they're just their whipping boys, right? They're just gonna do what they're told. Those people who we see that we just put all our energy and attention in, into, but they're just a front. Now you ask yourself a question, right? How many people, including yourself, would be willing to voluntarily pay more taxes and why, right? So how many people will jump up and down when it's time, go, you know what, what do you want to volunteer? You know, <clears throat> and if they, you say no, would it be something to do with, well, maybe I'd like to choose for myself where the fruits of my labour are directed. Is that something that's inherent to all of us, that we have needs for choice to choose what we do with what we produce, possibly. And then <clears throat> why then, when government imposes tax increases, why do people pay? That's the next question. Is it because it's not a voluntary process? Is it because they're under duress? Or they you know, know there's going to be some form of coercion coming? Um, you know, because they're if <clears throat> submitting to another person's will or face loss or harm. They're your two choices. You're submitting to some other self-elected authority's will or you're going to cop it. Um, and then in the end, you're left with, well, why don't I just preserve what limited choices I have left instead of losing them all? That's what you're kind of left with to choose. So, you know, they're not the best of choices, are they? But that's what you're left with when you have a government structure that has no accountability. And that's what we've been having for thousands of years. And uh, we've been thinking we're free. Carry on the seizing of property, that which is proper to man by government, the cult. Now, I call them a cult because a cult has two rules they have rules for themselves, and then they have rules for others. And if you're not in the cult, you're going to cop the other rules, and they aren't ones you are going to enjoy. Is always justified. So, the word justified I explained in the previous video, but I'll do it here again. So, made into a right by a self appointed superior class that claims such a practice is necessary to, wait for it, uphold the common good. And who gets to decide what the common good is? Do you? No, not you. See how they use it? They always use these terms that we're familiar with that makes us believe that, oh, yeah, that they know what we need better than we do. That's right, because we're just too, we just don't have the capacity to understand what we really need. We need to have others decide for us. So, again, just... Just in Latin is right or law. And also the other part of justifies facere, which is to create or to make. So to create a right or to make up a right and manifest into existence. So that's what the government does that we have now because there's no accountability. Yeah, that's why they created parliamentary immunity. If you paid attention to some of my previous videos about what happened after the 1689 Bill of Rights, sovereignty, because they were the ones who decided what was going to happen and how it was going to be done. Uh, and that means that they grant themselves parliamentary immunity. Isn't that uh, perfect? How about that? So I'm going to end it here. I'm going to pick it up um, again and carry on with the taxation one, just so I don't go over time. I want to keep these short, and I'll be back with part three. All right. Uh, we'll come back with part three. Um, there's a, a whole heap of very interesting comments that are popping up. I'm sorry, Cass, that uh, you're leaving. What a... Uh, shame that'll be for everybody. Um, uh, if it's that probably came out the <coughs> wrong way. Uh, I'll bring uh, one one uh, comment up. Uh, we've been having a bit of a chat about it uh, offline, and and here it is, Joe Blow. Uh, so, Fitz, you particularly wanted to just bring this up while we were while we were at pausing. <laughs> between videos can you explain why joe may have the wrong end of the stick here when he believes god gave us dominion over air land and water uh, uh yeah look um i love this one this is one of my favorite ones i hear it all the time so the first question is um joe blow if that's the case then i like i need you to go stand on a cliff face right and jump off it and then claim dominion over that air let me see you do that if you don't like that option, try the other one. Go stand on some rocks, right, where there's really heavy waves coming in 
and and let me see you claim a dominion over that water when that wave comes in and whacks you. Let me see who's the master there. All right, so what do you mean by that, right? So people don't understand. This is not about you owning anything in nature. You are here because of nature. You don't get to split it up, right? These land, air, water arguments are just so ridiculous. You know, where does ecclesiastical law, where does it exist when you go and jump in the air? Where, when does, where does that ever happen? Where does commerce happen when you're playing in the water? When does that happen? This is about dividing that which exists in unity. If anything that's got you disintegrating nature, that means you are working against the very thing you actually believe exists and why you're here. You can't divide nature. Land, air and water is all one unit. It all works in concert with one another. It doesn't work <coughs> in isolation. And that kind of thinking that you can isolate those things, that's how slavery happens. So go and show me, prove it. Go show me how you can grant, gain dominion over those things. Show me how it's done. Like, I'd love that question, but I need you to show me how it's done. These are just mm -hmm. things that people parrot out without actually having any real understanding about what they're saying. This is a trinity, and the trinity is to divide and disintegrate. As soon as you disintegrate, that's Satanism. Satanism is all about separation, where this is about integration. You never disidentify. Everything is integrated in life, right? A tree cannot grow without water, and it's stuck in the soil. And then what does it do? It expires carbon dioxide and we breathe it in. Everything is one unified cycle. So how does this even got anything to do with like law? It's got nothing to do with it. Law is something you don't have any power over. What you're talking about is a legal construct. That's a mind game. That's what you're talking about. But that's got nothing to do with law. That's man-made ideas, which is legal rights. And legal rights, what that is, that's what you are allowed to do. So if you claim your legal rights, land, air, and water, that's someone defining what you're allowed to do. This is what you guys don't understand. You've been sucked in in so many ways. It's, it's beyond belief. And I'm just really, like, I, I just laugh at this stuff now. I'm just like, oh, my God, these people keep doing this. And what happens, right, is when these guys, when they actually work out the system they're running, you know, this whole land or water system, you've got to claim melodical titles and all that kind of stuff. It supercharges their egos. They're like, oh, this is so convoluted and so complex. I've mastered it. And then you start pushing it yourself and start selling it to others. So now you are gaining profit out of trying to sell someone their freedom. You can't sell freedom. Yeah. It's inherent in all of us. So have a real think about that, guys. Really think about it deeply. Open up your conscience, right? That part of your uh, uh, <clears throat> your being that can actually connect into spirit and really ask yourself that question you know does can you divide land air and water can you really do it well if you can't divide in nature yep. why can you do it in any other sphere so this is a mind uh, trick so joe, also, joe also asks is the bible uh, common law isn't it uh no the bible is no, yeah the Bible itself isn't common law, but what they do is they take those Ten Commandments that are in there and they use that aspect, right? So basically, do no harm, cause no loss, keep the peace and commit no fraud. That Those Ten Commandments can be all condensed into that. So it's those sort of ten laws that they've got in there. They just call that God's law. But they're just common sense things anyway. Like, you don't need someone to teach you that. It's just inherent in all of us. So no, it's not yeah. technically no, but yes, you can see it. That compart component of it, yes. And, uh, there's something uh, just up there, a reply from one of the other viewers. Uh, all right, well, let's uh, get back onto it. I, because of the uh, bit of a mistake earlier, we are running a bit behind time, folks. I'm sorry, that was entirely my fault. Uh, let's get back into uh, the videos for tonight. We've got two more to get through. Uh, thankfully, they are shorter ones, so uh, but equally as as in depth and um, and as educational. So uh, look forward to uh, hearing your thoughts once we get out the end of these uh, two. If you've got some questions for us, we're happy to answer them. And when I say we, I mean Fitz, of course. Here we go. <laughs> okay, so if I've done my count right, this will be number four. So now we're going to move into the next section of rights, which is um, another way that they're a violated, should I say, and that's through prohibition. So now you start thinking, you know, marijuana, natural, even natural medicines, what's happened this whole time through COVID, for example. Um, and then what happened when the Rockefellers before that even took over the whole medicine and they just criminalized uh, and demonized anything that was natural, right? 
that was all prohibition. Same with, you know, the classic one what happened in America, you know, with the alcohol. And then all of a sudden it's like it survived this whole pandemic, right, this pretend pandemic. Um, alcohol was like no problem, totally good for you now. Once upon a time it wasn't. Gee, you wonder what was going on when they did it back then? What was the real incentive behind that? Hmm, you can only wonder, can't you? All right, so it's the claim that a group of people, usually a cult, that call themselves government, have been given the right to dictate to others what substance they can put inside their own body. And if they refuse to comply with the dictates of their masters, they will be fined or imprisoned. There's some good free will going on right there, isn't there? What do you reckon? So have a think about that. That's what, uh, and then you just um, do the opposite, the inversion, and think about these jabs, right? Because it's it's not what you want to, I can't put your body, what you have to put in your body, right? So it goes both ways. <clears throat> they can prohibit you from putting things in your body that you choose um, for yourself, whether um, it's healthy or not. It's still your choice because it's your body, right? Well, then they can do the opposite too, and they can tell you what you have to put in your body. Right? So if you grant one, you get the other. You grant both. There's no half measures here. So let's take a look at this. So if we, you know, are sovereign, if we understand self-mastery, that means we accept that to be sovereign is to be the sole ruler of the kingdom of self. Then it follows that our body is our property. Remember that which is proper to man? Yeah. The body is a complex biological organism that each individuated expression of consciousness requires to experience the material world. So if you understand that we are just mere spirits who have come to have a physical experience, that's what that's saying, right? And can you constrain the spirit? Is there a way to do that? No. So why constrain it when it gets into a physical body? See, these are really important questions that you need to be asking yourself. All right. A little further. The reason one owns their body is because the body is the vehicle one's individuated consciousness requires to inhabit in order to access the material world. So I just said that before, right? When sample groups were quizzed as to whether they own their body, the majority had a long pause as they were unsure. Could you imagine, right? Now, if you really think about it, you can see why they'd be unsure, right? Because the intuition would be telling them, hang on a sec. If I really own my body, why am I always doing what other people tell me, like people like government? You know, so that people would intuitively have the understanding that maybe they don't, you know, and they do accept that someone knows better than them. I've actually heard people say that. So it sort of doesn't really surprise me that, that people were unsure, actually. All right, next one. Okay, it is self evident that if an individual's body is their exclusive property, then that individual has the natural right to decide for themselves what will or will not be put in their own body. It's pretty self-explanatory, right? Yet that's not our actual experience. So let's read on. All right. Prohibition is claiming the right to command what can and cannot be put into the body of another individual amounts to the claim of ownership of the other individual's body. So if you needed any more evidence about what government's been doing, it's been telling you that they own your body. So not only do they own your property, everything you lay before, right? They own you too. And that's what these jabs have shown us. Now, it was only a matter of time before they showed us what they've really been doing where we couldn't ignore it, right? Unfortunately, the majority of people have decided to ignore it. And the word ignorance actually means to deny truth right to refuse it so the majority are actually in refusal of what's the right there in their face uh whoever's left can really see it now and there's no confusing us confusing us as to what's really happening right the claim of ownership of another's another person's body amounts to slavery right so if some individual we never met before just came up to you in the street and said mate i own your body are you going to go yeah no worries well when it's the government we sort of seem to be okay with it yeah because they have the power of punishment. That's why. That's why the police are the biggest problem here. And let's move on. So prohibition is merely a euphemism for slavery backed by violence, regardless of the justifications, remember, to create a right, uh, made by those who claim such practices are, again, 
the old, the old chestnut, necessary for the common good because they know better than you what's better for you, right, and good for you because they have a divine right to rule and that means they have divine understanding that you don't. You're just too simple, right? The reason why you have a conscience is it's relevant. You don't need one, right? So we just suppress it with your intellect. That's all you need to do. Um, so you carry on and just be a good slave now. Now, again, remember, we spoke about this earlier in a one-to-one -one engagement or arrangement. Since no individual anywhere on earth has the right to claim ownership of another individual's body, such behavior can never be delegated to a group of individuals and be called a right. So if it can't exist between you and someone else, how does it now just exist because it's a bigger bunch of people who claim it? Like, how does that even make sense? Where can that actually be proven in nature that that's a, a thing? You see, so if it can't be proven in nature, it doesn't exist. And it's always the mind trick. That's what this is all about. It's been nothing more. And it's about us actually seeing it for what it really is. So that's why I'm really hammering this, guys. So again, all forms of prohibition, whether by individuals or gangs, we call government, are always violations of one's integrity. Remember what integrity means? To remain whole. No matter the circumstance. So no matter how it's put, whatever the reasons are for it, as soon as someone decides that they have the right to decide for you what you can do with the gift that was given to your consciousness so you can navigate this material world, that is a violation. It's just that simple. And it's been going on and we've been unaware of it because we've been too comfortable. Yeah. So these people who call themselves police, right, they are at the forefront of it. They are the enforcers of all of this because they're not meant to be run by government. They're meant to be um, under our control, we the people because they're meant to be serving our sovereignty. Remember what sovereignty means? To be able to rulership and control of another. But while, when government took them over, which was ages ago, this has been happening, and as well before Australia was even a colony. So um, you got to really think about these people who think the 1901 Commonwealth of Australia Constitution Act is actually uh, there for their freedoms, as opposed to there for their slavery. Have a real good think about it. All right, that'll do for this one. Well, what a pity that, that uh, Peter Piper and Cass disappeared off before we get to video three this evening. That's all I'll <laughs> say about that initially. Um, so, folks, if, you, if you're following along, um, that sort of knocks a big hole in any const Australian constitutional argument that you're likely to have put forward to you. Um, Fitz, you and I strike this argument every day. Uh, oh, the Constitution says that. But if we work this to the Constitution, it does this. Uh, or it does that, um, you're much better at hiding your eyes glazing over than I am um, because the Constitution isn't worth the piece of paper it's written on, quite clearly. Um, people are going to find that uh, difficult to understand and then we're going to get into a Magna Carta conversation. So I don't want to divert away from tonight's learnings uh, at all because this is, as you say, all about rights tonight. Is there anything you want to say at this point? Will I just get on to into the, the fourth video? Uh, just quickly about that 1901 Commonwealth um, of Australia con uh, Constitution. Uh, just wanted to say that all it was was voting for um, privileges and benefits. That's what that was the vote for. It wasn't to do with rights because if rights are inherent in nature, no one can grant them to you. So if you're voting for your rights, they're not rights. You're voting for your privileges and benefits. And that's why they're being revoked, guys. That's why we're here in this. The proof is in the eating, right? We're living it. If that was a fair income constitution, none of this would be happening. It's right in front of your eyes. You want to see it? You'll see it. Yeah. If you don't, we carry are. on. Yeah. All right. Uh, we'll move on, get into the fourth video. Here we go. Okay. This hopefully will be the last one I'm doing on right. Well, when I say here we go, I... I mean, here we go. I'll try another go. Okay, this hopefully will be the last one I'm doing on rights, uh, and I've given it enough depth for you guys to really get just how significant it is to understand this. Um, so let's think about licenses and permits, right? What we've been paying for since we've been born. All right, so government, the cult, grants itself the right to prevent others from meeting their needs and their universal needs, actually, because they apply to all of us 
for choice because that's one of our biggest needs ever. You think about what happens when you don't get your needs for choice met, right? It's usually chaos and violence. To travel freely, so we all have a need to do that. Engage in leisure, that's a need for us. Make improvements to our property or our dwellings, right? We always want to improve something, right? Improve our quality of living. Uh, and gathering in open spaces and plus all the other things that you need all of a sudden permits and licenses for, right? Unless the others, which is us, beg or pay. It's a privilege if you've got to beg or pay, right? For the privilege of meeting their universal needs. So we, for, to meet our universal needs, we need to beg or pay for them. That's the structure we've been living under. And their needs for self-determination, right? So if we were in, not inherently self-determining, right, why does, does anyone that I've never met or ever met not like it if, if someone they've never met before just shows up and just, just impose their will over, over the top of them, right? How come they don't like it? So that means we're meant to be self-determining. And if we're meant to be self-determining, why do we accept this? Oh, I missed out a bit at the bottom. That's meant to be this government. Based on the preferences and discretion of government. That's what meant to say government at the bottom. Whoopsie. Don't know what happened there. Um, I need to go back and fix that. <laughs> and let's go to the next one. All right. So licenses and permits are not, it's just another euphemism for slavery, regardless of the justifications and what justification is to create a right of those who claim such practices, here we go again, are necessary for the common good. Okay? I love that one. I will never stop using that one. If it works, why, why fix it? You know what I mean? It's not broken. Keep using it. If anyone does not have the right to claim ownership, if one, sorry, does not have the right to claim ownership over someone else's rights, such claims cannot be delegated to a gang or cult, what we call government, and magically become rights. All forms of licensing and permits are a violation of rights. So permit, think about that. It's like permission, isn't it? You know, to license something. That's to grant you permission. You know, that's what it's doing. And <clears throat> we've been living under that system for since I've been born and people before me, et cetera. And no one thinks twice of it. They just think that's their natural state. The majority don't. And the ones who do, they're the ones who suffer. Suffer because you're the ones who are made to be crazy. You're that um, character in Shakespeare, you know, the one that always used to speak the truth, but just look like they were like just really out of sorts, right? The scary dude. Um, that's who you are. And most of us who've been following uh, what's really been happening have been treated like that now. So we really know what it's like to be one of Shakespeare's characters. All right. So now I'm just going to bring up the model that we've been living under as to why we've been paying these licenses and permits. All right, here's that model. And this is why we've been paying tax, you know, being prohibited from doing that which we require for our own, you know, our needs for choice because we've been living this model, the domination model, right? The head of state, the three branches of government, yeah? They're all over the top of you. So you've got three big imposing machines just waiting to crush you if you don't do what you're told. That's why we've been following orders because we've been terrified to do anything else because it's in being inverted that's all the cabal does right these hidden priest class they just invert what's already there they don't create anything new because they don't have the capacity to but they're very good at inverting that which is already there and so if we were living in our natural state right as we exist in nature um and i'll just bring up what that actually looks like if we were living according to this structure the way that the order of creation happened, you know, natural laws at the top, the rule of law. So not the rule that the uh, bar wants you to believe, you know, that's the rule of nations. Well, that's what we've been living up to and still are to this day. That's what they call the rule of law. But the actual rule of law is exists in nature, that natural law rules. And then we, the people, create like a, just a decision-making body, right, to carry out a function on our behalf. That's all that is, government. It's nothing else, right? And there's got to be a way that we make sure that that doesn't do anything else other than carry out that which we require from it. And those people who stand in that position to do that, right, they take oaths. Right? And then that means they're accountable. And there's only one mechanism that's, that's actually enshrined that. And I think you know what I'm going to say it is, right? Yep, here it comes. It's the rule of law where no one is above the law. Now, I've done this to death, but I'm going to keep doing it. 
because it really needs to be understood. So if it means I've got to keep saying it, then that's what I'm going to keep doing. The people are equal to ourselves because we now form a body that oversees everything else that we created, that being the head of state and the legislature and those who are there. And it's not even meant to be police. They're meant to be actually constables. Um, and if we run a retributive justice system, then there'll be prisons. But that is how it was meant to be. So none of this rulership stuff occurs, that we can exist in nature as we actually are. And the one thing about the Magna Carta that uh, I just learned the other day, which is a real good tidbit, is that it's actually about what government can't do. That's what it's truly about. It's written in a way that's what government can't do. We are just free, right, because we're born in nature. So it doesn't have any restrictions on us. The only things we need to hold to is those four tenets. As long as we hold to those, there's no other restrictions. We can exist, you know, as nature does. That's what the Magna Carta enshrines. So if you don't think that that's actually got anything to do with you, then carry on for looking for alternative ways to get your freedom back. But if you actually believe that, you know, you actually exist in nature and in your natural state of giving and receiving and to be un unimpeded from doing that and that there just needs to be a mechanism that keeps that in check, then the Magna Carta is for you because there's no other structure that I'm aware of that enshrines it. So hopefully that's giving you guys a bit of food for thought and something to really ponder on as to how you're going to actually act in the service of that which you seek, and that is to re-establish your freedom. That's uh, certainly giving us a lot of food for thought, Fitz, and uh, it might be a bit confronting for some people uh, and, and some people's beliefs. But um, nonetheless, we're here to educate and uh, it's up to people whether they believe or not. We're big encouragers of people looking around and trying to find the right solution. We, we are simply offering a version that we believe is the correct solution, much like anybody else. Um, I think, uh, you know, tonight we've had um, more people watching than uh, we have had in any other previous lessons. So I'd like to welcome everybody along. Uh, the false start might have worked well for us by the look of it. So... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's great to have so many new, new folks along and joining us, Fitz. Uh, we're not done yet. That is the end of the video presentation, but I have a whole board of slides here we can talk about. Um, so uh, take us on from, from where we are, Fitz. Now, as you said uh, earlier this evening, the four videos that we've already played, uh, uh, or five videos that we've, we've played, are fairly in-depth, um, probably require watching again. Uh, if at all possible. But um, but now you want to explain a little bit more about rights. Yeah, so um, I've got some slides ready. So if we just go um, one by one and work our way through, um, hopefully I can build it out a bit more. So as you see, there is no such thing as a right to prevent others from exercising a right since rights are actions in the service and advancement of all life. So I just want people to just sit there and ponder on that one for a second, right? <clears throat> a right is something that is going to contribute to each other's well-being. So how can someone have a right to prevent that? That's like a contradiction in terms. So when Dan Andrews got up and said, this is not about your rights, it's about your freedoms, um, <clears throat> you think about that, right? How can safety not be a right? So how can one be in contradiction with the other? They're all connected. So this is the real yeah. sort of delicate stuff that's there under the surface. And if you don't understand what rights means, it's not something that's exclusive to any individual. So when people say I've got the right to say what I like, no, they're not expressing a right. That's not a right. What they're expressing is a demand to say whatever they like. But it's not a right. Because if what you say is going to be the source or the stimulant for harm to someone else, you're not expressing a right. This is really important to understand that. So this is, when people use that word right, they're actually claiming some kind of authority they don't have. So they need to understand what rights really means. That's why I've really been like careful with this. So that's why it requires people to go back over it. The, the level of programming is quite intense. Just when I look at like the chat, I'm watching what's actually happening in real time and people are pushing beliefs as if they're like eternal truths. Right? So that's yes. programming without them realizing it, that they're not expressing anything to do with rights right now. They're expressing their claim over what they believe is universal and everyone just must actually adhere to it. Well, that's not how rights operate. And so I'm actually seeing it in, in real terms right now in the chat. 
Um, so I'm going to read on. The claim over the right <coughs> that rights of another is called, so that claim, if you claim rights, that you've got the right to prevent someone from exercising their right, that's actually called slavery. And stems from the belief there exists a chosen few with the divine right to rule. Now, the one thing I remember learning years ago is you show me someone who's dominated and I'll show you someone who seeks to dominate. And so without realizing it, we actually dominate each other because we have been dominated. And we use that belief that we have the right to say whatever we like. That's our us ex exercising free will. That's not a right. And I'm seeing it in the chat. And so this is the confronting, this is the confronting work, guys. It's the going introspective and understanding that you're not exercising rights. Because anything that harms someone else is not a right. It's a demand. Hence the existence of self-appointed gods that create rights for others, therefore have the power to revoke those rights. And so this is like really pivotal stuff, guys. I do recommend you go back and watch this over and really think about what's being said here and see if you can process it because it's about deprogramming and then re, re um, installing a new program, one that's in alignment with your conscience. So let your conscience be the guide, right? not your belief system because your belief system is just about your private proclivities, your biases, you know, your preferences, and we all have them, and that's fine, but that's separate to knowledge. And what rights is about knowledge, that which we all know. We all know what's required for us to live in peaceful, harmonious coexistence. So if I start saying things that are going to be stimulating um, and shaming somebody else, well, I'm not, ex I'm not, experience I'm not ex exercising a right. And that's what a lot of this conversation I've been watching has been doing. It's a, a lot of put-downs in here. Um, so mm. we can go to the next one. Uh, Roger that. All right. So how tyranny thrive? Removal from the jurors of their judgment on justice and equity issues transforms trial by jury into unlawful, one-sided, unfair, mistrial by government judges, the corrupt method by which tyrannies thrive and enables and obliges, obliges sorry, judges now, remember, they're paid by the government right, to enforce every persecution, stealth tax, oppression, money-motivated motiv subterfuge. Subterfuge means deception. And injustice a government introduces, which then lawlessly claims is the law. So how we get tricked is they use the word the law because law means something permanent. That means they have yep. self-appointed themselves a right to impose their private biases and proclivities and prejudices and claim that it's universal to all of us. That's how it's done. And it's done through the, uh, the trial, uh, sorry, not trial by jury, but through putting judges in place of juries. That's how it's done. Mm. And that's why trial by jury is at the yeah. center of the whole thing. And where a, judge, where a judge can mold what a jury can and cannot hear, what is admissible. Yes, they, they and what have is so it. much control, correct. Yeah. And they yeah. decide yeah. what becomes evidence, the whole thing. It's like so, so bent. Uh, and if yep. we don't understand wh what enshrines that, we're going to keep arguing with ourselves. There's only one place where that's enshrined, guys. And everything about the law is what you can prove. And the Magna Carta has not been disproved. So that's what's going to be your saviour, guys. All this other stuff that you're talking about, that's all just invention. It's all a legal structure. But it's not mm. what the people agreed to. That's what the law is. The law is what the people agreed to through their customs and traditions. Um, so now <clears throat> it says how crime escalates. Without exception, history shows that, that societies bereft of common law trial by jury tend inexorably into crime, inequality, and we've been living in inequality for years, we all know that, strife, injustice. Now, how much misery has been coming our way and still is, right, for the last two years especially? Yeah. And despotism, it's right there in your face, guys. I don't know how much more you need to see. And the, one of the scariest things that I see is the how many people believe they know something someone else doesn't. We all know the same thing because we have a conscience. We just need to follow it. And yep. whatever doesn't line up with that, it's got nothing to do with law. It's really that simple. So just follow your conscience, guys. Not your ego, but your conscience. And a lot of this conversation I'm seeing is mostly ego. Hardly any of it's conscience. So if you want unity, if you want to live in peace, you need to step away from the ego and drop into your conscience, guys. And then you'll see unity. You'll know exactly what you need to do. You'll know how to unify it's there. It's imprinted in you. You Absolutely. just need to step into it. Yep. 
Yep, absolutely. Okay, so <clears throat> common law. A set of non-negotiable conditions necessary to preserve the natural flow of giving and receiving from the heart. So we are natural, we exist in nature, therefore we have a natural capacity to give from the heart. But to, in order to do that, we need to be treated with respect as well. So there's certain things for respect to actually exist that cannot be in existence. So there cannot be a loss, there cannot be a harm, there cannot be a breach of the peace, and there cannot be any fraud. And then we can actually exist in peace and give from the heart. And then we can receive from the heart. We can trust each other. But those conditions cannot be in existence. That's why it's written in the apophatic. And there's nothing else that I know of that writes it that way. So it's about understanding what apophatic means, guys, and how that is about what is required. It's speaking in the negative in order to eliminate those conditions that create the problems. Uh, is there any more slides, Carl? Absolutely. I just wanted to make the point here again that language, understanding what words mean is once again uh, very, very important because they have changed what we believe a word means. So um, in part, learning the difference between um, uh, legalese, if you like, and, and our meaning of a word is imperative if we are going to be able to fully appreciate the changes that you and I are discussing here. Um, I think that's that's something that we don't cover enough of on FITS. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> that's pretty much the mind trick, right? If, if I was to do a, um, a quiz and ask people what's the first word that comes to their mind when I say anarchy, I'd love to see what the chat yeah. says, guys, because yeah. you guys are going to be surprised once you find out what the true meaning of it is. But if you want to type in what, you, what comes the first word that you associate with the word anarchy, um, type it in the chat. I'd love to see what the um, what the response is, uh, and then we'll that'll be a great uh, uh, what's the word I'm after uh, example of how words mean things and how minds get controlled by the definitions that you're told of what those words mean, but they're not actually, and it's done deliberately. Yeah. So um, now I'm going to say read this one. So you've got the two different types of common laws that are that are stipulated here. So you've got the UN contract law. So a lot of common law groups, this is what they, they get taught. Cause no harm, cause no loss, right? And cause no injuries. Well, injury and harm are the same thing. And then it's on your contract. So now you've got to decide, right? Do you believe that your spirit incarnated into this body to be a transactional being, that it's only motivated by transaction, by what you can get back for what you do? Is that what you believe you've come in, in, incarnated to be here for? Well, then this would be perfect for you, right? Uh, all those others who believe we're coming here to expand our consciousness through um, interacting with one another and giving from the heart and receiving from the heart and um, contributing to each other's well-being so we can um, enjoy the benefits of the abundance of this planet, well, then this the other side is what's going to be more suited to you because that's the conditions necessary, what I said. All those things need to be void for that to actually happen. So that's why I've drawn that contrast, right? And then you've got the third type of um, what they call common law, which is the judge-made law, which is the legal system. So you need to know which one, you know, stands and speaks to your spirit, guys. And if, once you learn that and work it out, then you only focus on there and, and leave all the other stuff out. It's really that simple because your conscience will lead you to the answer. Um, so there's a few people I can see in the chat already know what anarchy means, but most people, if you ask them, they think it means chaos. Uh, yeah. And that's because they've been having that repeated to them over and over again. And it actually means no rulers. So the one who said no rulers, you're correct. But, but we've been taught it means no rules. They took out one letter and changed the whole thing. And yeah. so it shows you how they trick you with words. And anarchy actually means no slaves, no, no masters. That's what it really means. It's a, it's a life without any slaves or any masters. That's the words true nature. Mean. Yep. Words and so that's why I wanted to put that in so people can really understand how we're, um, we are controlled by words because they define it for us, and then we just believe that is truth. All right, so, so is there a way? Sorry, Carl? Is there a way forward with this slide? Yeah, absolutely. Like, if you guys really start wanting to pay attention, that's why everything I do, I define it and I give it meaning. And it's about learning what the uh, actual root of the words are. Most of the words in English are actually either from Greek or Latin, and they're very, preci very precise meanings. They've just been manipulated um, and shown to us to mean something entirely different. 
because we're not in charge of our own education. It's just that simple. You know, we're putting in the hands of who? Of government. And I've just gone and explained what government is. They're there to strip you of your dignity, your integrity. They're to treat you as a slave because they believe they're gods. You know, instead of one monarch, it's an oligarchy. It's a whole group of people. And where do they go? They go to these private schools. And what do they teach in the private schools? All this knowledge that you don't get to learn. You know, so this is like an exclusive training ground for mind control. And you have a look how many politicians come from those private schools. Go, go do your research and you'll see. They learn this secret, what they call secret knowledge, because that's the veil that stands between you and anyone who claims to be your master. It's just the lack of knowledge. And they have the capacity to use it, to manipulate it, to work against you because they know how it works because you don't. They keep that information from you. It's like the Roman centurion who nearly lost his life when he started teaching a slave about the trivium. You know, he, he actually got pulled aside and said, you do have to do that again. You're, you're dead because we can't have them knowing what we know because then we won't have any slaves. But that's what those private schools are. They can't have us knowing what they know because we won't be good slaves. So this yep. is how we rectify it, guys, through the trial by jury. This is the trinity of law, the three aspects that we are actually in alignment with that which we seek. So what's on trial is the legislation just as much as the accused. You know, and the, the definition of democracy is the individual jury is the final arbiter of law, not voting, right? Not the 1901 Commonwealth of Australia Constitution where you voted for the limits set by you, by your masters. That's not democracy. That's what you've been taught it is. But who taught it to you? The masters. And are they going to teach you the truth? No. So, you know, you start asking these questions. And then the second part of the is, uh, Trinity is annulment by jury. And the last part is when we bring them in front of us for the crimes they've committed because they've taken an oath to protect and serve our sovereignty. Sovereignty meaning that we are above the rulership or control of another. And as soon as they breach that, they are accountable to us and the penalties are severe because you can't have them messing with our sovereignty because all crimes stem from a breach of sovereignty. And that's where we are today with this World Health Order stuff and everything that you guys are complaining about in the chat, the whole court corrupt system. It's because they're not courts. They are private banking oligarchy that we just get dragged into so they can actually harvest and plunder us. That's what those things, that's what you guys are arguing about in the chat about how to win in their, in their private banking system. There's no winning there. They always win as soon as you walk in there, no matter what the outcome is. Um, so that's kind of what I was hoping to get through tonight. But there's so much more depth in rights that it looks like that we'll need to do another show on it. Yes, mate, uh, you are 100% right. It is such a deep thing. And, and, and one of the most shocking points, I suppose, for most people to learn is that uh, your right to say anything is not really a right. Uh, your right to say or do anything you please is not really a right. Um, it, it, if it encroaches on somebody else's right, then it's not a right at all. Um, that's one of the big takeaways from me out of tonight. Yeah, so that's the real sort of uh, nuances that we don't actually have elaborated, right? We just take things for granted and we just accept what other people tell us. But we don't actually really look into it with like, forensic you know investigation that's the level that's required um so someone's put up suus juris su juris but that's still roman stuff guys you need to understand that someone can't actually define that for you it doesn't exist we are free in nature anything that man creates is not about your freedom right you use that serious ju juris you are still under their control because their system's still going to be in place that's what you need to understand this is about annihilating a system that grants you rights it doesn't work like that Nature doesn't have that in existence. That's a mind control structure, guys. I don't know how, how, how much more I need to get into that before it starts making sense for you. Um, so, you know, so, as soon as you start using their system to beat the system, you are trying to actually fix the problem with the very thinking that created it. That doesn't work out. You can't fix a problem with the th very thinking that created it. It's not possible. Yep, so we just really want to get that through, through, guys, see if you can let that land for you. Um, I was having an interesting conversation today with a guy out of Melbourne who I'm going to be talking to tomorrow afternoon live at about 5 o'clock. Um, now, they are working on a different angle of the freedom movement, uh, but more particularly, they are looking at bringing all the freedom movements together into one 
place, which is something we're all trying to do uh, and all seem to be pulling in different directions. So uh, we're going to get underway with that tomorrow afternoon. This is going to be core learning eventually, we hope, for, for people moving forward. But um, obviously, Fitz, a lot of people have different ideas. We've seen tonight in the chat, you know, there are, there are a lot of folks who've come forward um, with arguments based on Magna Carta 1297. And, and um, I mean, this isn't the time or the place tonight. They can go, go and watch, you know, shows one, two or three and find out about that uh, or any of the other videos that we've made on the channel for us to go back and discuss it again tonight. But it is important that we somehow get into the chat with these people uh, so that when the time comes, um, this sort of thing can be brought forward as a potential solution uh, in the future. Um, and judging by the look of uh, the comments that we're getting and the, uh, the views that we're getting, um, this is falling well with people. They are, they, are, they are accepting it and finding it, if not easy to understand, easy to interpret and go back and follow, maybe after a second or a third watch. I know some of the videos I've seen from you, I've got to watch two or three times. So uh, there are people doing that. So there is hope for the movement going fo forward, do you think? Yes, I do. Um, I always find when we speak from a place where there's unity, uh, that lands information lands a lot easier. So it's about what's common to all of us. And so if you think about why everyone's here, right, it's because we're all traumatized. We've been violated in the most wicked of ways. And, and what we've done is we've just passed our trauma into each other, you know, because that's what yeah. we've been taught to do. That's how, what our masters showed us how to be. And so that's not us actually acting as sovereigns, right? If we repeat the very behavior that's happened to us, then we're not in control. And yeah. what I've seen in the chat tonight is just an expression of that trauma. So instead of turning our guns on each other, how about we look inwards, right, and actually find our peace by understanding that we don't need to argue with each other. We don't need to force things down each other's throats. We just need to find that space of where we actually can uh, unite what's central to all of us, you know, and that is our need to be, you know, in our own and our rights to be preserved. And so what, what is the actual structure that actually supports that? Well, I've only found one. And so if someone else can find another, please show me. But I wouldn't be here doing this if I found an alternative. I haven't. And I've searched really hard. And I've actually done the testing in my conscience, right? I've seen what work, what actually sits in it where there's no resistance. And the Magna Carta, when I understand it, deeper and deeper I understand it, I understand it in a way that makes sense that I can't deny it. I just can't. And so everyone who sits there arguing, saying it's a relic and, you know, that it doesn't exist and, there's, you know, God's not in it or, or God's mentioned in it and stuff like that, that's not what this is about. This is about you understanding from a deep place, right, what's justice, what's not. You don't need any book to show you that. It's built inside you. You have that. You have that access from the spirit, you know, into natural law, like the cosmic understanding that if you cause harm to another, you know. Your feelings will tell you that was not okay, all right? Why do you have feelings? Because they motivate you to act. But that's all built in us. We're pre, pre stamped with all that uh, intelligence. And all we do is follow that. And where does it lead us, right? Is, and what speaks to that? And there's only one document that speaks to that that I know of that's been enshrined to make sure. See, our, our uh, forebearers, they fought for our rights the way that we're trying to fight for them today. And for, they fought for them so we wouldn't have to worry about that. We just need to use it. That's how the law works. It doesn't work if you're just thinking, arguing and thinking you're right and the other one's wrong. There's only one universal truth, guys. There isn't a bunch of them. There's one. And that's natural law. And so you find something that aligns itself with it and maybe you'll have a choice. You know, decide, well, well, is that the way out? You know, because that's just how we are in nature. We're free. Well, there's actually something that's been enshrined that your ancestors actually put in place so you wouldn't have to worry about this. You would just have to pick it up and use it if you ever got in that situation. So we just need to unite around it, pick it up and use it, and we get rid of the crims, right? Once we bring them to trial and we get all the, the money that they've um, accumulated through all the criminality and we distribute it amongst ourselves, right? We're not going to be arguing with each other anymore. Mm. But right now we're behaving like slaves because we're just arguing with each other. But that's exactly what they want. So, you know, this is about shoving your belief systems into other people. That's what slaves do. This is the, yeah. this is the real confronting work, guys. 
That's what really speaking up. Freely speaking, asks many people are under summons to appear in court for infringements. The court seeks financial penalties. Please discuss how Section 160 of the Act enables the individual to have these thrown out. Um, that's, not, that's not what we're here to do, my friend. Not what we're here to do. But um, there is a way to do all this. We're just not talking about it here. Uh, this is this is a Magna Carta lesson, and and uh, well. You know, it's not the place to discuss this, but uh, we can do something. Although, while you're still thinking about acts, it's not going to be helpful. Um, uh, there are ways and means of approaching that, uh, but we're we're well short of being able to teach them to you just yet. I think that would be the safest way of describing that. Fitz, yeah, yeah. This is um. So I'm not here to teach you about legislation because legislation is not about your freedom. As you can yeah. see, the community here is where we put legislation on trial. So we don't have trial by jury. It's about us actually getting up and claiming that, right? And there's a process involved that the Magna Carta actually has enshrined in it, in Article 61, of how to do that. And the faster we got, you guys all catch up and start acting, because none of this knowledge means anything unless you put it into action. Everything's what you manifest, right? It's not what you think. It's what you actually do that counts. So if you don't work towards the very thing that you're seeking and you don't know what the clear direction is to how to get you there, you're living in a state of confusion. So you're owned. The only way you're going to do it is if you master yourself. And you first need to have the knowledge before you can master yourself. You need to know what's going to give you clear direction of freedom. And if you try something out and it doesn't work out and you keep trying it out and versions of it, we haven't learned. And it yeah. seems yeah. like, unfortunately, we're still in that place where people still want to go down different paths. Yes, exactly right. Exactly right. Uh, Fitz, another unbelievable lesson. Right. It's only part one. I'm looking forward to part two and what could probably turn into part three, I think, by the way we've discussed it. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we'll get on with that uh, next week. Of course, uh, Soundbite University on Facebook, if you want to go and uh, find people there. And in the uh, description, I have uploaded the Telegram chat uh, for your group there, Fitz. Do you want to explain what's, uh, what the MC1215 group uh, on Telegram does? Yeah, so that's a group for people who are actually ready to act and take the oath and send out the notices and then whatever process happens after that, which I don't want to discuss too much right now. Um, people actually stand in courage and actually want to do the action part, right? So they're done with the talking, they're done with the arguing, they actually want to start manifesting their freedom in reality. So it's about it's a way that they can find each other in their local communities and see who else is there that they can team up with and they can work together as units to actually work in a unison, you know, in a unified manner. And inside there, you'll find a link to the Telegram group I've set up where the same stuff that's on Soundbot Uni in, um, on Facebook. If you're not on Facebook, you can come in there. There's a link that will take you to the Telegram group. And so all the stuff I've got on Facebook is in that Telegram group. So that's just for your knowledge only. It's not for anything else. So if you want to back up what you already have now with other knowledge, that's in there for you to access. So, um, yeah, so one you can access through the other. The first one's just, and it's not for you to post what you believe or anything like that. It's just for you to look for anyone else who might be in your region. Uh, there's some knowledge in there as well. Some of the uh, admins have put some stuff in there, which I'm really grateful for, about trial by jury and other, other matters, which is really important because we're going to need to understand trial by jury, guys. That's a real critical thing. So if we want to start um, convicting these crims, we need to know how that's done through the, the process of actual law, you know, the one that we agreed to that's been hidden from us. So there is a process by which yeah. that can happen and it can be quite efficient and effective. So that instead of just talking about what we want to do, we actually have the tools to go do it. Now it just requires people to come and do it. So that's why I've set that group up so you guys can all find each other. Brilliant. Excellent stuff. Once again, my friend, thank you for joining us. It's been, uh, uh, well, another very informative evening. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed it and uh, look forward to getting back amongst uh, the, the rights question next week. Yeah, no, I appreciate the opportunity, guys. So um, thanks, everyone, for joining in today, and um, I look forward to seeing you all next week. Cheers, mate. We'll talk to you then. All right. Bye now.